Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day as always. An easy way to support the channel is by leaving a like, by leaving a comment or two comments or three comments or four comments or as many comments as you so feel or by subscribing if you have not already done so as it does indeed help with the algorithm and as always, Watch out for the robots, and I think these are actually people sometimes uh, pretending to be me in the comment section, because sometimes they write stuff, and I'm like, robots can't write that, but maybe robots can write that. I don't know what robots can write. Anyway, uh, welcome back to another News I Missed, where I go over News I Missed. There's always so much stuff happening in the cryptocurrency space, it's impossible to keep up with it during the course of a normal week. So on the weekend, I bring it to everybody, just so you all are completely up to date with all the nonsensical things that are happening in the space. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. For those of you who missed it, sorry if you missed it and sorry for bringing it up, but the cryptocurrency market is still in a little tiny bit of a dip in prices, price-wise, simply because of news that we've been getting over the last couple of days. If you missed the, I believe it was the, not the, well, I guess, yeah, the last two videos are actually quite important if you want to be caught completely up to date with why the prices are the way that they are. I had a lot of friends messaging me, and I was like, just watch the video. I didn't feel like explaining for another 30 minutes why everything was uh, falling. So a lot of coins look as if they're trying to rise back up in price, which is typically the way that we see it. We see like a little slight movement back up. It usually depends on if Bitcoin lets the rest of the market continue to move back up, but there are a lot of altcoins who are trying to push back up in price. What's this one? Um, yeah, so basically, it, it's everything that had to do or still has to do with China. Um, it's basically China has reiterated uh, what they have already stated before. Just put it, pretty much putting out a, they didn't put out a pamphlet, but basically letting companies know, hey, this was illegal before, it's still illegal now. Uh, there's no new ban. It's just stuff that we've known for the last four, five, six years. Not a joke. Uh, however, news outlets in the West, if you want to use that term, uh, decided to completely run away with it and say that China is stopping people from buying crypto. You can't do this. You can't do that. And they're stopping people from being able to mine cryptocurrencies, which is a complete lie. <laughs> so what, what it is, is that uh, previously before they told people, if you want to mine Bitcoin, you have to tell us. You have to register with us in some sort of way. And basically, new people have entered the space who have not registered with them, and that is the crackdown that's actually going on. It's them basically finding people who haven't registered and basically, I guess, penalizing them or saying, hey, fill out this paperwork so we know exactly how much you're getting. So anyway, yeah, that's all the price news that we have. There wasn't a lot today, thank the goodness, because sometimes it gets completely out of control and all over the place, and everyone's like, oh, what was us? Anyway, so that's the money news, and let's move on. Also, in the news, um, a lot of people have decided to openly say that regardless of what uh, Mr. Elon Musk has stated about his stance on Bitcoin, which is also quite confusing because he continues to tweet and there's always something new every single day. Um, the last I checked was the diamond hands thing. And I think he wrote something else about Dogecoin, I think yesterday, but the price didn't move and everyone was like... <gasps> I can't believe it. So that's kind of one other thing. It's, it's been Mark Cuban. It's Novogratz. It's the, I mean, the entire spread of, of billionaires in the cryptocurrency space have basically all made sure to come forward and say, hey, we still love Bitcoin. Bitcoin's still amazing. The environmental impact, we're working on it. We're still going to be accepting Bitcoin. Bitcoin's going to be blah, 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 blah. And I guess they say this as a type of, uh, not a pat on the head, but more like a, it'll be okay kind of thing. Uh, what was that woman? Kathy Woods? That's probably not even her name at all. Uh, who recently came out yesterday. I, don't, don't look it up because I'm pretty sure that's not even her name. And I'm kind of... Kath, 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 Kathleen Woodinson. Kath, Kath, I don't know her name. Who The, 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 the woman who basically said uh, nothing has really changed price-wise and Bitcoin is still on track to hit half a million dollars. So... Yeah, anyway, that's the rich people still loving us despite the drop. Um, if you, if I, I really, I'm telling you, if, if you want to hear the entire nonsensicalness of uh, why we actually dropped in the coordinatedness, is that a word? Coordinatedness is probably not a word, but you still understood what I meant of the entire price drop. Isn't English weird that you can just make up stuff and throw it together and it still kind of makes sense? Anyway, that's the Mark Cuban news and let's move on. 
I I didn't know this was a thing, but alas, here here we are. Um, Saturday, that's today. Woo! Um, May twenty second marks the eleventh anniversary of Bitcoin Pizza Day. Um, in two thousand ten, a little sad. Um, a guy by the name of Laszlo he, uh, ordered two pizzas for ten thousand Bitcoin, an amount that was just around twenty five dollars at the time. He posted online, said, hey, I'm looking for some pizzas. I think, I think the point was to prove that Bitcoin had utility and therefore it could be used to buy everything in the real world. People bought him pizzas. 11 years later, those 10,000 Bitcoin are now worth more than $350 million. And it says the date is now celebrated annually. I actually didn't know that. I don't know anyone who celebrates Bitcoin Pizza Day. I know people who just eat pizza normally. I don't know they waited for this specific day to... Go get some pizza. Several companies are commemorating this event this year. Um, Slice, okay, is giving away more than 2,500 pizzas across the United States in partnership with Pizza Dow. Papa John's is giving UK customers 10 pounds of free Bitcoin when they place an order of more than 20 pounds. Several exchanges are running trading contests. Binance is allowing traders to collect virtual pizza ingredients, okay, for a chance to win Bitcoin, and Gate.io is running a similar contest. Additionally, crypto companies are rewarding engagement on social media. Paxful, BZ Africa, and Beldex will give users who describe or design their ideal pizza a chance to win crypto. Is that a real thing? What? Huobi, Ocean EX, Coin Tiger and Cesters, Cesters are giving away free cryptocurrency to those who retweet or share content announcements. They're going to have like billions of retweets just so people can get some free crypto. Gemini UK and OKCoin OK are giving away free pizza vouchers, while BitBuy is giving away Uber Eats gift cards to users. There's a lot of stuff going on. The offers don't end there. You Hodler is giving away a free Tesla. To commemorate Pizza Day, users who put more than $1,000 into their service will be entered into the draw. Ballet is giving away pizza keychains to customers who buy a metal wallet. <sighs> NFT collectors such as Rare Pizza and Crypto Pizza. Finally, some companies are donating to charities. Fidelity Digital Assets will donate to Global Food Banking, while Anthony Pompliano recently launched Bitcoin Pizza. <sighs> also heard some stuff about that as well. There was a lot of people... Who are a little annoyed that that um, Anthony Pompliano has released something called Bitcoin Pizza, and I think they're not even accepting Bitcoin. I think they're only accepting U.S. dollars. That people are like, uh, "What's going on there?" So, did not know this was a thing. If you are hankering for some pizza today, then by golly, this might be the time to do so. Um, I would love to see the numbers from Papa John tomorrow as to how many people actually use their service to get some. 10 free pounds worth of Bitcoin because, you know, a lot of people are going to be buying it. Anyway, that's all the pizza news. I, did, I had no idea so many things were taking place, but sure. I mean, if any of those sound fancy enough to you and you can get some free money, I why, why the fudge not? Anyway, that's the pizza news, and let's move on. Next up, U.S.-based... Wow, why did I say it that way? Based U.S.-based crypto exchange Coinbase might... Add Ethereum as collateral in the near future as part of the company's strategy to expand their lending business. This was according to Alicia Haas, chief financial officer at Coinbase. Haas was speaking during the exchange's recent analyst Q&A call for the first quarter. She was asked about Coinbase's move to increase the available line of credit to 100,000 US dollars worth of Bitcoin on U.S. Bitcoin balances. Uh, so basically what we're seeing is that, um, and I just assumed this was going to happen at some point, but I, I think the, the rapid pace at which it's taking place is actually quite fascinating. Uh, for some reason, about three or four weeks ago, nearly every other article that we have is usually Ethereum-based. Uh, companies buying Ethereum, talking about how much they like Ethereum. There's still a lot of um, flippening articles that are kind of out there, but they've kind of slowed down, if you will, over the last four to five days. As our market dropped, the news basically became the sky is falling, the sky is falling. But before that, there was tons of um, big banks and companies and basically talking about that they see a flippening happening. They assume a flippening is going to happen. Basically, the flippening, meaning Ethereum will become the number one coin. I do not think that's going to happen anytime soon. But once again, I also did not foresee a 
$25,000 drop in price because Elon Musk tweeted five times, got angry with people, and then China re-put out news that wasn't really news and everyone panicked. So, you know, anything can happen in this space. Um, I feel like this is an assumption. I do not know. Uh, Coinbase and many other companies are probably gearing up to, first of all, they already have loan platforms. Uh, loans and getting people into debt, is, I mean, this is a major major industry across the entire world. It's how banks function. Many of these cryptocurrency exchanges also have banking charters. They're going to start acting like banks. They are probably going to be the banks of the future. And this is why we see banks trying, like actual banks, trying to get into the cryptocurrency space because the new banks are basically doing what they can do, but better. And on top of that, I assume very soon we are going to start hearing of uh, big cryptocurrency exchanges actually um, offering mortgages and stuff like that. And, you know, you can use your crypto as collateral or show us how much crypto you have. You've been with us for five years. We see that you're trustworthy. So it's going to get really real very quick. But now they're thinking of uh, adding in Ethereum to this as well. I think Ethereum is, I, I think there's no question about it. I'm pretty sure Ethereum is here to stay if you want to use that term. But uh, the quickness at which I'm seeing so many companies talking about how great Ethereum is and adding Ethereum I think it's just a, a precursor, if you will, to uh, future prices. Anyway, so Coinbase is going to be thinking about they're, they're mulling the decision. as So if they want to add Ethereum as collateral, I'm pretty sure they're going to. Anyway, that's the Coinbase news. Let's move on. Next up, Binance says in the news, the number of daily transactions on Binance's smart chain continues to grow at an impressive rate and hit a peak value of 9.1 million transactions on Monday, the 3rd of May. In addition, the Binance smart chain has been handling over 7 million transactions on a daily basis since late April. And there's a little chart right there that shows the number always going up. To understand the magnitude of the number of daily transactions on Binance's smart chain, the blockchain network of Ethereum, handles around 1.5 million transactions per day within the last two weeks. Therefore, at an average of around 8 million daily transactions on Binance's smart chain, the daily traditional transactional activity of the Binance smart chain exceeds that of Ethereum by a factor of 5.3x. Binance smart chain is also getting a lot of... What's the word? Um, attention now as well. A lot of... Projects and companies have moved away from Ethereum. I mean, it's been a, a you know, it's it's been a small amount. It's not like trillions of them have left. But they're now announcing that we're going to be using the Binance Smart Chain. Binance Smart Chain is also getting a lot of um, hype because of its lower energy usage. Uh, Binance Coin itself has also, it was pre-mined and they also burned the coin. So there's no real mining of the coin and therefore it uses less electricity than Bitcoin and Ethereum. And it's getting more attention and all these other kind of things. So, I mean, sure, why not? I assume this was going to happen. I, I don't think that Binance got into the game uh, simply to lose. They, 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 this is all extremely calculated, I'm pretty sure. I, I wonder. I assume they have partnerships and... I don't want to use the word allegiances. Uh, but something along that line with like probably very huge companies in gigantic countries who are trying to also make sure that they succeed as well. But that's the Binance news. Good for them. I assume this this is only going to continue growing as they continue to expand and um, NFTs and all that other stuff continue to happen. So yeah, good job, Binance, on your smart chain thingamajiggers. Let's move on. Next up, in sure, why not? It's 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 2021. Another celebrity has joined the non fungible token bandwagon as boxing legend. Floyd Mayweather is going to be launching his own NFT collection. Um, apparently, he's doing this on the 26th of this month before he fights Logan Paul. I saw that somewhere. I thought it was a joke. I, I, I mean, come on. I was like, okay, you know, Floyd Mayweather is not going to punch this kid in the face 38 times. Uh, but I think he's getting like $100 million or something like that. So I would also do the exact same just going to throw that out there. Anyway, um, Floyd Mayweather um, partnering with Iron Bend Reality Gaming and Zytara Labs to release an NFT collection ahead of his long-awaited fight. Each digital artwork will be dedicated to the boxer's legendary career and personal life, who has never 
tasted a loss. That's not a phrase. Who has never lost a match during his reign on the ring. Also not a phrase. The compilation um, is scheduled to launch on the 26th of May. I've seen photos of him. I've never actually seen him fight. I've heard tales of his of his glorious wins and him just, you know, kind of dodging and punching and not really falling down. But all I've seen are photos of him uh, kind of, I think flaunting is an understatement. Uh, the amount of, if you've never, just type in Floyd Mayweather money and you'll find exactly what you need to see. Uh, they're like tables just full of like millions of dollars and uh, he's holding up money to his ear. I think maybe his phone didn't have a connection. So he thought the money had a, had a, anyway. Um, so yeah, if if this interests you, how heavy are those chains? They don't look light. I don't think they're hollow. I, I is that a spike? What is that? What is he? I don't. So so um, he's quite eccentric, but I mean he's earned it. I just really I, I remember one time I was looking at something with all the money he had, and I was like, please tell me you are at least adve- investing at least ten percent of that. That's all I need to know. You know, have fun with your life and go buy ridiculous golden airplanes and stuff like that. But Please invest a portion of that because um, you might remember, and I'm pretty sure you've heard stories like this. So many celebrities who were like hyper rich during the 90s are broke. And I don't mean like broke. I mean like MC Hammer broke. I mean like they have like nothing. Like they, they are just completely. So that I, 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 I think that would be one of the worst things in the entire world to have hundreds of millions of dollars. And then 15 years down the line, you're having an interview being like, oh, yeah, man, those were the days. And you can tell that he's just sleeping on a mattress and there's no actual bed frame. So uh, I got a little bit off tangent there, but I, I please somebody let this man know what investing is so that he can actually not be broke. Anyway, that's the Floyd Mayweather. If you're interested in an in NFT from this guy, then all right, let's move on. Also in the news, um, apparently recently, Stanley Druken Miller has uh, alerted the world that inflation is here. He says it's very troubling. He thinks the I don't even have to read the entire article. I've, I've heard this so many times in the last couple of days. He believes that the U.S. dollar has maybe maximum 15 years left as the world reserve currency. He thinks that cryptocurrencies could potentially be a, a, a big thing that people are going to get into as it could potentially be a hedge against why am I, I'm, why am I doing so much of this? I'm, I'm seeing myself like floating my hands into the air and I'm kind of um, like dancing. Anyway, um, so a lot of uh, once we had an actual indication or news from the Fed that inflation was here, which I don't understand how it took people so long. Remember when we were looking at the, the M1 money supply? If you haven't looked at that already. Um, go to your local search engine and type in US um, M1, that is the letter M as in Michael, uh, M1 money supply, and you'll find the chart quite easily. Um, and it basically looks like a rocket because they have how much money they've printed. And then we have people being like, oh, yeah, the, inf- the, the rate of inflation is still at 1%, I promise. And it's like, no, you, you printed 15 times the amount of money you normally would in a year over the course of three months. So we know that something is amiss. Um, but now on top of this, everyone's talking about the potential of the U S dollar collapsing and where it's going to go and what should potentially, or could potentially be the next thing that's going to take its place. Yeah. Anyway, that's the inflation news. Cause this was also quite popular. There are tons of other analysts who are out there just kind of mimicking every, Oh yeah, I also know about inflation. Inflation's bad. And it's like, yeah, we all know it's bad. We all know that it's here. Just took everyone else a little bit of time to be able to get it together. Anyway. That's the guy holding the microphone in the photo news. Let's move on. Next up, and something that I think is actually quite smart, just saying, Tsug-based cryptocurrency payments specialist and over-the-counter liquidity provider, FNTX Capital Swiss has partnered with Portuguese property developer 355 Developments to let its users buy condominiums with Dogecoin. Mm. Hmm. According to finance magnates, the New York, nope, wrong, the new real estate initiative is led by David Rabbi. I'm not sure if it's Rabbi or Rabbi, uh, co-founder of 355 Developments. Rabbi, also the co-founder of FNTX Israel Bitcoin. Nope, Bidden. What? Why would you name it so close to that? Israel Bidden. It looks like leverage a network of fiat-friendly banking and settlement services to help clients accept cryptocurrency payments. The partnership will... As a result, allow crypto holders to buy luxury homes in Lisboa with their digital assets, including Bitcoin, 
Ether and Doggy. Why is this smart? Can anyone tell me? Anybody? Anybody in the class? Portugal has a 0% tax rate for when you when you cash out of cryptocurrencies. You can Google it. If you are a resident of the country, meaning, you know, you fill out all the paperwork, you go there, you become a resident. Uh, when you cash out of your crypto, whenever you choose to decide to do so, your tax rate is 0%, I believe, for 10 years. It's used as an incentive to get people to the country, and it's working because who doesn't want 0% taxes over the course of a 10-year period? Um... I just thought this was quite interesting when I when I read that they were doing this in Portugal. I said I, I know exactly why because the amount of people who are going to be moving to Portugal. First of all, I hear, I hear that Portugal is absolutely beautiful and amazing. I've I've only heard really really good things. It's like very quiet, very relaxed in Lisbon, and it's like a huge artist scene. And all these people are moving there. And you live next to the beach. Like who would who who does not want something like that? Uh, but then the zero percent tax rate and also being able to spend your crypto. That would have normally been taxed on real estate next to the beach. It's kind of a no-brainer kind of thing. Anyway, so yeah, Dogecoin is still being adopted everywhere. I don't think any of us should be surprised or confused at this point. It's just kind of the way that the world works. So cool. Yeah, doggy real estate. Sounds amazing. Let's move on. What's this one? Oh, yeah, this is a really cool one. Sorry for saying that voice. I'm like, oh, yeah. Each of the top 10 Bitcoin mining pools by hash rate have signaled for at least one block of the Taproot soft fork. After Bitcoin mining pool BTC Top recently mined a green block, the top 10 Bitcoin mining pools by hash rate have now all signaled for at least one block for Taproot activation, according to Taproot Watch. And even on top of that, this is like actually news I missed, 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 missed. This one came out right after it. 95% of the Bitcoin hash rate is now signaling for Taproot activation. This means Taproot is going to give Bitcoin um, private transactions. Not extensively everything will be private, but it's definitely on the way. I assume in about 10 years, maybe even quicker than that. We are going to have completely private transactions on Bitcoin. Um, same exact thing with the many other... For, I mean... It's usually not even that it's kept secret. Like we we know that these things are also going to happen. Uh, Litecoin is also going to have completely private transactions with Mimblewimble. I think you'll be there'll be like a switch, so you can kind of say, "Hey, I want to not be secretive," or "Hey, put the switch on." And you say, "Hey, you know, um, you know, you can't tell where my transactions are going." Um, Ethereum has also discussed before in the past as well that they also plan on having private transactions. This is why I I I, I I've seen discussions um, quite recently with people. Uh, telling me or saying online, hey, you know, we shouldn't be using Bitcoin because Bitcoin can be tracked and traced. And I'm like, well, you don't, I mean, the, every major coin at some point, except for probably XRP, is going to have private transactions. Like that is definitely going to be a thing. So I'm actually quite excited for this. I'm very excited that, that it, it's only going to have to be a soft fork. So we don't have another discussion of someone being like, well, I'm going to make a brand new Bitcoin and my Bitcoin is going to be the original Bitcoin that doesn't have the transactions because people should know where money is going. And it's like, stop it. So anyway, cool. Yeah. Binance is also signaling for this as well. Quite excited for this. Yeah. Let's move on. And to finish things off in something that I hope actually is good as the headlines pile up about Bitcoin's calamitous environmental impact, one group of investors and supporters have stepped up to the plate to defend the world's largest digital asset with the help of a crowd-funded FUD-fighting documentary. First announced by Investor, podcast host, and Bitcoin fanatic Brad Mills on Twitter, the goal of the film is to act as a definitive argument for why Bitcoin will transition the world to... Renewable energy faster than governments. And there's a little tweet for it right there. He said he assumes it'll cost between twenty to thirty thousand dollars for a professional mini documentary. He's putting in five K. Who else is in? Yeah. I hope this is good. Uh no, no, but I'll I'll take that back. Typically, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency based documentaries tend to be pretty good. It's cryptocurrency movies that are garbage. Every single crypto movie we've had so far has been absolutely terrible. Every single one. I tried watching so many of them. There was one that I watched. I forgot what country it was from. Somewhere in Asia. And I remember being so hyped. I was like, oh, just, just do this. I'm so excited for this movie. It was terrible. It was about like some kid was working for some guy. And the guy was like, oh, I'm going to transfer you some money. 
It's supposed to be like a couple bucks. And I think he ended up transferring him like 60,000 Bitcoin. It was some astronomical number. And I'm like, if, if I'm transferring you money on my phone, I'm going to make sure that you are getting five bucks and not 60,000 Bitcoin. And then I think the guy is trying to escape from the city and the, the, the gangster is like, get him, we must to find my money. And I'm like, why is all this happening? It was just people running down the street and jumping over cars and like, what, what, who made this movie? Like what, that was the premise? You couldn't think of anything else as a movie except for that this guy sent the wrong amount of Bitcoin to some kid who has to try and get out of poverty and run away with it. It was, it was a lot for my brain, and I just didn't care for it. So a lot of cryptocurrency movie, movies. Movies have been absolutely terrible. Um, however, uh, the documentaries have not been too bad. Um, this is also one of the arguments as well, is that while Bitcoin does consume a lot of electricity, it is pushing the space forward to figure out solutions quicklier, not a word, uh, than governments are currently doing because governments don't actually care. Don't know if you know that. So, cool. I'm, I was going to say I'm excited for this. I'm probably, uh, I don't know. I'll watch it. I'll, I'll try and watch it. So good for them. That That's amazing that people are making films and there's a coin in the director's chair and I'm not really sure why. I don't think this thing is even actually filming. I don't think even, what is all this? Anyway, that's that news. So at the moment here, the prices, um, it's like down up down doesn't make sense but when you looked at the prices it made sense as i said it bitcoin is currently at thirty six thousand six hundred dollars it is down by nine percent ethereum is at two thousand just a smidge below two thousand three hundred it is down by sixteen percent binance coin is down by twenty percent xrp is down by i don't have to say the percentage down anymore it's just more of a these are the current prices i uh, would like to believe that this is when logic kind of hit the market and I told everyone, hey, stop panicking because everyone's panicking over nothing. Uh, the news isn't even actually news. It's being like, oh, hey, there's grass outside and we're going to recut it. And everyone's like, you got to cut the grass. And everyone loses their mind and starts selling their grass stock because, you know, there's just no real logic in the market. But alas, prices are down once again. Um, I'm going to assume this will be attributed to the um, China news that we've had over the course of the last couple of days and probably also hedge funds liquidating so saith that person from a couple days ago. I do hope you all enjoyed. I do hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all. Once again, for watching and or listening, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.